Star Science Tutorial 52 TEK 811A Food Webs and Symbiosis TEK 811A Describe Producer, Consumer, Predator Prey, and Parasite Host Relationships as they occur in food webs within marine, freshwater, and terrestrial ecosystems. Energy Roles and Food Webs it is essential for each organism in an ecosystem to have a source of energy to survive. In all land and most aquatic ecosystems, the original source of energy supporting all life is radiant or electromagnetic energy from the sun. Producers are the organisms that have the ability to obtain energy from a non-living source such as the sun or deep sea volcanic vents. On land and in shallow aquatic ecosystems, plants are the producers that create food for the rest of the ecosystem through the process of photosynthesis. In this chemical reaction, carbon dioxide and water, the reactants, are broken down and recombined into sugar and oxygen, the products. In deep sea ecosystems near volcanic vents and in rock, there are organisms called chemotrophs that can use chemical energy instead of radiant energy to survive. The chemical reaction varies with the ecosystem, but generally uses available chemical energy to make food in a process called chemosynthesis. An organism that uses photosynthesis or chemosynthesis to produce food is also known as an autotroph, which means self-feeding. Consumers, also called heterotrophs, or organisms that cannot make their own food. They obtain their food by eating producers. Consumers can further be classified by what they eat. Omnivores eat both plant and animals. Examples of omnivores are humans and bears. Herbivores eat only plants. Examples of herbivores are cows and antelope. Scavengers are animals that eat the bodies of already dead animals. A buzzard is an example of a scavenger. Carnivores only eat other animals that they have killed. Examples of carnivores are wolves and lions. Some animals that are usually carnivores may also eat dead animals they find. Examples of carnivores that may act as a scavenger are coyotes and hawks. Decomposers are organisms that break down waste and dead organisms not already eaten by scavengers so that the life essential elements and compounds can be returned to the environment. The two main classes of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. The energy role of an organism shown by its position in a food web is called its trophic level. In land ecosystems there are usually four trophic levels producer, first level consumer, second level consumer, and third level consumer. Producers produce the food to support themselves and everyone above them in the food web. The first level consumers eat the producers, the second level consumers eat the first level consumers, and the third level consumers eat the second level consumers. Animals can occupy more than one trophic level depending on what they eat. For example, humans are both a first and second level consumer when they eat a hamburger. The bun, lettuce, and tomato are all plants, making the human a first level consumer. The hamburger patty is processed from a cow, which ate only plants. This part of the hamburger makes the human a second level consumer. A predator is a carnivore that hunts other animals, its prey, for food. For example, wolves are natural predators of caribou and moose, their prey. Predators control the population of prey species and eliminate the weaker individuals within the prey population, serving to make the prey population stronger and better adapted. A food chain is a description of one particular sequence of feeding events, organisms eating one another. It does not describe all of the possible food sources eaten by an organism, just one possible sequence. The arrows point in the direction of energy flow. In this food chain, the oak tree is the producer, 
The squirrel is the first level consumer and the bobcat is the second level consumer. A food web is a more complete diagram of the energy flow and predator-prey relationships within an ecosystem. It shows a number of overlapping food chains in one diagram. The arrows in the food web show the direction of energy flow from the prey to the predator. Because each predator has more than one prey species, its trophic level is found by tracing the energy flow along one of several possible paths. In this terrestrial or land food web, the squirrel, rabbit, deer, mouse, and grasshopper are all first level consumers when they eat plants. But the mouse, an omnivore, can also be a second level consumer when it eats the grasshopper that ate the plant. The mountain lion is a second level consumer when it eats the deer or rabbit, but it is a third level consumer when it eats the snake that ate the mouse that ate the grass. The hawk is a second, third, or fourth level consumer depending on what it eats and what its prey ate. The bobcat is a second level consumer when it eats the squirrel or rabbit, but might be either a second or third level consumer when it eats the mouse depending on what the mouse ate. In a marine food web, there can be more trophic levels because of the great variety of fish sizes and the microscopic size of most producers in the ocean. In addition, there are marine mammals and birds that also extend the food web. In a freshwater food web, there are fewer trophic levels because there are no large predator fish or mammals such as sharks or killer whales. There is a greater crossover between land and water animals, however. When one species population is removed from a food web through disease, habitat destruction, or excessive hunting by humans, the population of other species up and down the food web will be affected. It may open up a niche for other species to move into the area or for an existing species to expand its food sources. It may reduce the population of the predators of that removed prey species unless they have other food sources to take the place of the removed species. Symbiosis. A symbiotic relationship, also called symbiosis, is a close relationship between different species that benefits at least one of the species in the relationship. There are three different kinds of symbiotic relationships classified by whether one or both of the species benefits from the relationship or whether one species in the relationship is harmed. Mutualism is a symbiotic relationship in which both species benefit from the relationship. For example, Humans often keep working animals to help them on farms and ranches. A sheep herder works with a sheep dog to control and protect his flock. The sheep herder feeds and cares for the dog and the dog provides help in herding sheep. Another example of a mutualistic relationship is lichen, a mixed colony of an algae and a fungus. The fungus extracts nutrients from the solid rock the lichen lives on and the algae uses those nutrients and sunlight to make food for both the algae and the fungus. Commensalism is a symbiotic relationship in which one species benefits while the other species is not affected positively or negatively. For example, a cowbird follows cows and other grazing animals around, waiting for grasshoppers and other insects to jump out of the grass as the cow moves. The cow is not a fit by the cowbirds, but the cowbird is helped by the cows. Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship in which one species benefits, the parasite, while the other is harmed, the host. Fleas and ticks on a dog are examples of parasites. Parasites usually do not kill their host, but usually do harm their health, sometimes enough to shorten their lifespan. Parasites often inhabit the bodies of their host for part of their life cycle and cannot reproduce without the host species. The parasite responsible for malaria needs both mosquitoes and humans to complete its life cycle. Some ticks rely on three different host species to complete their life cycle. 